Hi there, Anup. So, your pollution essay, um, having already read through it slightly, there's just a couple of concerns uh, regarding task response and coherence and cohesion. So the question asks you to discuss uh, the causes of pollution as well as provide some potential solutions. Uh, so the the causes are discussed and the question is discussed in the introduction, but you don't state anything about proposing potential solutions. Um, this paragraph is about um, the causes of pollution, but then again, so is this one. Well, actually, no. What we tend to, what we've what we've sort of deviated into here, is then the resulting effects of air pollution. So we, we really the second paragraph should have discussed the the solutions that we propose to solve the issue or to mitigate these problems. Your conclusion, as a result, features recommendations. Um, so really what we should have done is had the first paragraph with um, causes, the second paragraph discussing solutions, and then the conclusion should be short, only two sentences long, in order to just summarize, and the, summarize your points and reaffirm your opinion. Um, so in terms of logical progression and the proper use of paragraphs, um, discuss the question as well as what you believe the causes and solutions are, or at least discuss the causes and say that you will propose some solutions in the essay. First paragraph, causes. Second paragraph, solutions. Conclusion, uh, round it all off. Summarize it, reaffirm your opinion. Um, so that would mean that you would properly respond to the task in, in, a, um, in a coherent manner. But with that in mind, what I'll do um, because obviously you, I, I've read your email, you don't want me to just replace large sections of the text. Um, so with that in mind, uh, we'll just now correct your grammar and phrasing, your lexical resource and grammatical range and accuracy throughout the essay. So it is a well-known fact um, that rising pollution rates in major cities across the world have been. Um, you've used the plural of rates, so rising pollution rates have been. A major concern of the people. It is a concern of the people in those cities. In my view, this issue, um, we could just say is caused by the unplanned growth uh, across in the old cities is not quite correct. I would just say caused by the, un caused by the unplanned growth of old cities into metropolitan cities. This essay will further discuss this and provide some solutions that could potentially mitigate this problem. Here, <coughs> excuse me, we should be using British English, so no Zs, Ss in this part instead. Whenever you have an isation, um, British people use the S, and IELTS is a British Council exam, so I would recommend using British English. With rapid industrialization and technological advancements, uh, comma here, and just cities. Cities have become the drivers of a nation's possessive economic growth. This in turn either causes or is causing the migration of large numbers. Huge is an American informal term. Large numbers of people from all walks of life um, in search of employment. Also, please don't use shorthand versions of um, things that you haven't stated previously, because we, the reader, are not aware of what S&P means. So state it fully, and then, in the f and then if you want to refer to it as S&P later, um, state it in brackets after you've stated it fully. According to the current S&P Journal edition, the authorities in major cities are not planning or instead of using not and enough, we could say are planning insufficiently in 
increasing precision, are planning insufficiently for unprecedented population growth. As a result, comma, increasing vehicular traffic is leading to air and noise pollution at alarming rates, as concluded in the article. This trend is observed in cities in developing countries, a phenomenon previously observed in the European Let's say as let's say this this trend is increasingly observed in cities in developing countries. Um, a two thousand and five Cambridge study. This trend is increasingly observed in cities in developing countries. Um, I think I would like to use a whereas here. We could use whereas previously it was predominantly observed in European countries per a 2005 Cambridge study. Furthermore, so what we could do here is just say the growing population's demand for housing has pushed major green areas. Pushed is the wrong word because this this talks to um, applying a force, applying a direct force to. So we should say transformed or changed. Um, oh, transformed. The growing population's demand for housing has transformed major green areas into concrete urban dwellings, uh, resulting in <coughs> less fresh air and increasing environmental pollution. In addition to this, we don't need that, we can just say, and this is one word, greenhouse gases emitted into the air are forming a barrier in Earth's possessive, and also the planet should be capitalised, are forming a barrier in Earth's atmosphere, trapping the dust and heat, causing increased levels of night temperatures. Um, Greenhouse gases do not trap dust. Um, the effect, the greenhouse effect, um, is is due to the fact that uh, the the radiation that comes from the sun directly is in the ultraviolet spectrum. So ultraviolet radiation penetrates the atmosphere and hits the ground. The ground then re-emits radiation in the infrared range. This cannot penetrate um, greenhouse gases and causes warming. So whereas previously, let's say 50 years ago, ultraviolet light comes in <clears throat> and um, infrared light goes out. Um, not all of it escaped, but this, this maintained the temperature of the atmosphere, increasing the amount of carbon dioxide and methane, etc. in the atmosphere prevents... Um, much more of the infrared light from escaping, which is what causes the warming of the atmosphere. Um, the only layer that we could possibly refer to in terms of uh, a warming effect, well, actually, it's not even in terms of a warming effect. Um, well, no, it is. The ozone layer, the layer of O3 um, that surrounds the planet, does go some way to filtering out ultraviolet radiation. So it stops ultraviolet radiation from penetrating the atmosphere. With the loss of the ozone layer, well, the reduction in the ozone layer, more UV light is able to penetrate. Um, so greenhouse gases do not cause the destruction of the ozone layer. Certain chemicals released into the um, atmosphere do. Chlorofluorocarbons, for instance, or fluorines. Um, but green... It, the, the the process of warming that occurs from greenhouse gases is not um, one of trapping dust. It does trap infrared radiation, which causes a warming of the atmosphere. But anyway, sorry for that aside. While air pollution, um, I would say while the impact of... While the impact of air pollution...
Um, so this while is not necessary. What we could say is the impact of air pollution um, is um, is evident, and I wouldn't say commuting because commuting is literally just traveling to and from work. But what about everybody else? Um, so the impact of air pollution is evident in people who are increasingly suffering from respiratory problems. And the effect that it has, oops, sorry, wrong one, effect that it has on the flora and fauna. What is that effect, though? We should really expand that point slightly. As well as the hazards it poses to children's way of life, restricting their outdoor activity. So once again, we've, we've contained quite a lot of additional ideas in this last sentence that, that could have done with being expanded. So you've started by talking about um, the cause of environmental pollution, and then you've ended by talking about the effects of environmental pollution. Um, try to keep your paragraphs consistent so that they discuss one idea fully. Because um, as, as well, this essay does not ask for the effects of environmental pollution. It asks for the causes and some solutions. In my opinion, come uh, non-governmental organizations as well as government bodies, or we could say both governmental and non-governmental organizations, should increase the awareness of dangers of rising air, water, and noise pollution by utilizing media and internet to educate people on reducing pollution levels. People should be given incentives for riding public transport um, and ride sharing. Road safety departments need to have stricter emission checks on motor vehicles and impose heavy fines on defaulters. The city mayor should penalise industries, uh, I would say releasing their toxic waste into water bodies. Into water bodies. Um, releasing or disposing of. To tackle environmental pollution, comma, Governments in turn, uh, I would say must, must employ more staff to clean and also plan the urbanization to avoid, um, I would say, to avoid congestion in emerging cities. So. This paragraph here should be this paragraph here. Um, introduce, discuss point one, discuss point two, conclude. So it's the structure really of this essay um, that means it's not quite on point. Um, but all in all, you have a very, very good uh, lexical resource. Your strong point is certainly your lexical resource. Um, with some effort, you can correct the minor grammar mistakes that we've identified. Uh, but most of all, uh, stick to the traditional structure, the logical progression of the essay, and ensure that it responds fully to the question. But let's move on to your other piece. So, dear sir or madam, uh, we don't need to capitalise sir or madam. I am a research engineer in the medical imaging field. We don't need to capitalise that either. Double space there. I am a research engineer in the medical imaging field um, and looking for a challenging imaging career opportunity within the neuroimaging field. As an imaging engineer, come on, I would like to work within the bioinformatics domain of medical imaging. This is a rapidly growing field 
Um, I think that should be there. This is a rapidly growing field to aid doctors in clinical diagnosis or diagnoses, which is the plural, uh, as, well, as well as medical research projects. I am seeking a summer job to enhance my career at Sydney while I am on a sabbatical from my current work. I would be interested in a project for about four months to offer my expertise. Um, offer my We offer things to. So I offer my expertise to your ongoing works and collaborate with researchers at this esteemed institution. At York University, Toronto, I was on the Dean's list of preferred engineering students um, with a graduate degree in biomedical engineering. Upon graduation, I had then worked with the Parkland Hospital and Meadows Imaging Center, working closely with MRI physicists, neuroradiologists, and informatics domain for three years. Cool. So this can be, this can be, um, pluralized. That, sorry, capitalized. That can be capitalized. Um, but this one does not need to be. And neither does that one. Um, and I think this should be like this. MRI physicists and neuroradiologists within the informatics domain for three years. During this work period, I have gained profound domain knowledge and also put my computing skills um, applied to best analyze and visualize. Uh, so, okay. Again, um, clinical MRI neuroimaging data reflected by my publications. I would say as reflected. And I, just to be super, this is not bad, but I would just to be super precise, as reflected in my publications. I believe my skills would be utilized well by the ongoing research projects. Your ongoing research projects. I thank you very much for your time and look forward to hearing from you soon. Just faithfully, Anup. So we're getting there. Overall, your style is good. Your lexical resource is great. Um, we just need to try and keep your uh, your progression of your ideas in ta in check. And really, that's about it. You've managed to reduce your word count considerably, which is really really good. We've made considerable progress. I'm hopeful that by the end of this. Um, by the end of this process, you'll be producing possibly even Band 8 essays. Here's hoping. Well, I'll send this over to you now. Have a great day, Anna, and I'll speak to you soon.